So you've got your wargaming toys. You're ready to get them to the table. How are we going to make this work? One of the challenges being new to wargaming, independent of the system, whatever you're jumping in, Battletech, Warhammer 40K, Pacific Rim Extinction, is this idea where we have multiple units with multiple abilities that we want to leverage to win the mission objectives. And in that duality, we not only need to win the mission objectives, whatever they might be, take and hold this central point in the table, take and hold these table quarters, but at the same time, we're dealing with our opponent. They're going to try and win the mission themselves. So being able to destroy opposing units is one of the quickest ways to prevent your opponent from completing the mission objectives, while at the same time destroying your units and preventing you from reaching those mission objectives. Now, over time, as you become more familiar with your chosen wargaming system, you're going to have a a player personality. You're going to say, these are the models I enjoy. These are the types of lists and the types of things that I want to do on the table, pursuing tabletop immortality and tabletop glory. But as a starting point, the list is the communication that we use to execute tabletop battle tactics. The list is literally the units that we pick, uh, the infantry, the tanks, the ships, the squadrons, the mechs, whatever that's going to be. And there's a lot of ways to do this. I wanted to introduce one of the first list concepts that I started using. I found it had tremendous value as, as a new player to a new system, and it's effective. And it's effective in that not only does it work with a variety of games, you can plug in a lot of different units into this type of list building. So literally, if you have, if we're exploring Battletech and you have 50 different mechs, you plug them into the required role and you can make this list work. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very, very robust and it works. It's one of many. Now, before we discuss this list, the attack, support, and defense, I'm going to put down in the info box a link to a PDF on my blog. This goes into a lot more detail, not only in this list, but also in other ways of building lists, tactica, and thinking. I'd like you to grab that. I'd like you to think about those ideas. I'd like you to cut down your learning curve. I'd like you to improve them. And I'd like you to say, Fritz, I took them. I made them absolutely better. And I went from having to play 20 games to win in a system to now 10. I want to leapfrog. I want to cut down. I want to make and take advantage of that momentum. That, that's the idea behind that PDF. I want to kind of pay back that kindness and push that kindness forward that everyone has shown me over the years, sharing their time, their effort, and helping to make me whatever kind of player I may be in the moment. So definitely grab that at some point. All right, attack, support, and defense. Now, when we play a war game, there's, there's outside of historical war gaming where the army lists are kind of static because uh, here's the field of battle. This is what we're trying to recreate history. Here's the units that they have. And you can do alternate timelines and things like that. But usually they're pretty fixed. If we explore something like Chain of Command, World War II, they're they're, they're pretty fixed. But a lot of modern war games and most modern war games, there's the idea that things are fair. So we have battle value, sea bills, power points, power level, squadron points, gold crowns, throne gelt, whatever it's it's going to be, where you and I agree to a point value ahead of time and we buy different units. So what you're going to do is, based on the point value that you have, whatever in-game currency that you have, you are going to divide that into three parts, attack, support, and defense. So if I have 3,000 squadron points, I'm going to set aside 1,000 for this group called attack, a thousand for this group called support and a thousand for this group called defense. And we can slot in a lot of different models, a lot of different units, a lot of different toys to do this. Now, the key to executing this list is these assigned values are 100% static. You do not deviate. You do not deviate turn from turn. You hold fast. You do what needs to be done based on the decision ahead of time. And that could be a little bit harder because you're going to see in a moment, wargaming is an emotional thing. We we need you to have nerves of steel. Attack, support, defense. For the attack group, you're going to look through your models, through the units that you have available, 
And you're going to select units that are pure aggressive or units that you are going to use aggressively. You're going to spend that one third of points on units for attack. This group, when it deploys, it is going to run out, move out, fly out, whatever it's going to be as fast as it can to engage your opponent. It is literally going to attack. It does not matter the mission. It does not matter what they face. Now, you're not going to be reckless. I'm not going to run right up the center and, and have 100% of my opponent's army fire on one third of my army. By the weight of numbers and the volume of dice, I'm going to get torrented down. I'm going to try and be as aggressive as possible, but, but also as nimble as possible. So maybe I'll run up, a fl- up the flank. Maybe I will run and occupy uh, hard cover or a building. Maybe I'll run to the center of the table and dig in. But I am going to be aggressive. I'm going to attack. This attack group, I am going to try and trade. We are going to try and trade as many units as possible and keep our opponent occupied for as long as possible. Ultimately, everything in the attack group is going to be destroyed. It is going to be wiped out. Hopefully not too fast, but fast enough. So you can't get into this mindset literally taking the attack and sending out and being aggressive in a smart way, getting upset when your units get destroyed. That's the goal. Remember, there's two other parts of the list. The defensive part, the units that you select for defensive, they're going to go out and win the mission. So whatever those mission parameters are, they're going to focus on not destroying the opponent. Now they're going to have to engage on the way. But they're going to focus on winning that mission. So if the mission is make it to your opponent's deployment zone, grab the package, and escape, that's all they're doing. Now, on the way in, they might have to attack. They might have to break through. They're going to take some losses. I mean, no one's going to let you waltz in. But whatever the mission is, that's what they're going to do. You're going to dedicate just to that. And then we have the third, support. Support units are going to kind of float around and hang out on the table. And turn by turn, so literally attack, doesn't matter what turn it is, they're going to go attack till the end of the game till there's nothing more. The defense is literally, doesn't matter what turn it is, they're going to go and be win the mission, mission goals. That's all they're going to do the entire game. Support is literally going to be turn by turn. What do you need in the moment to either support your attack and make it last a little bit longer or support the defense, make it achieve the goals a little bit longer, or if your opponent gives you a great opportunity, right? They're moving out with an attack craft and you're like, wow, if I can nail this attack craft, it's going to crash. Let's have it happen. Or support in the moment, hey, they're moving up to capture this building. Maybe I can blow the building up and level it. What does that support thing need to do in this moment to gain you tactical momentum? It could be attacking, it could be defending, it could be hanging out, it could be doing any number of things, blocking other units. That's what the support is going to do. So you break up those points, attack, support, defense. They have a role, they have an assignment, you execute turn by turn, you stick to that plan, and uh, this has a lot of variety, a lot of possibility And it's a great way to utilize different models in your collection in different ways. Now, it's a little bit more complex than this. It goes into a lot more detail. But I'm going to leave that for the PDF for you guys to grab, for you guys to check out. Again, in the info box underneath this vlog, grab it, use it, make it better, and hopefully it cuts down your learning curve.